welcome. 3D Thoughts, sorry. 3D Avengers for Avengers Endgame Thoughts film. I do not know if this is going to be the start of a new video or if it's going to continue from the previous one. But just in case it's a new video, spoilers all throughout this video. So if you haven't watched the movie yet, you know, hold off on watching this video. And yeah, just going to pick up where I got to, let's see. Right, yeah, New York 2012. And the, yeah, the, the, you know, Cap says, you know, you have to act like your, your old selves or something like that. And, you know, Hulk is like, okay, you know, rips off the shirt. And he smashes a little stuff, but his heart isn't really in it. And I thought that was pretty funny. And he goes, you know, he's like, I, you know, I'm here for Doctor Strange. She's like, you're five years too late. I love that she's not like, who? We don't have a Doctor Strange here. No, she's just Doctor Strange. Well, you're too, you're too early. We don't have Doctor Strange yet. The, you know, she knows things that will come to pass five years from now but not you know just yeah and you know he's like no no, no look i can't i can't i don't have time to debate this with you so i'm just gonna take it and she you know pushes this astral self out of his body i i'm really glad that they did that they actually got all these actors excuse me back to do the roles that I've, I'm not 100% certain if, you know, was that really Natalie Portman? Because I, she didn't, like, love being in, in the Thor movies, but I, I'm not sure she ever really hated it. It was just she was frustrated that Thor 2, that they didn't, you know, that, that director Patty Jenkins dropped out, which I completely understand. And we have Asgard 2013. And... What does that say? Oh, Natalie Portman, right, yeah. And, you know, Thor realizes, you know, Frigga, Frigga dies today. I, I didn't, I, I didn't note it, but I really love the thing with like how, you know, she's, she's like standing here, you know, Thor's here behind the, this pillar and, and she's like here and she says to like, oh, just, you know, go, go, you know, I'm, I'm going to go, go around here. And he's like here. And then suddenly she's like right behind him. So like the, the, the other one that he, she, of her that he saw, you know, that must have been like an illusion version of her. Like how Loki makes the, you know, the little green tinted clones of himself. And, you know, Rocket is like, come here, come here, and just smack, you know, slaps him. And, you know, he gives this motivating speech, you know. What, what does he say? You, you think you're the only one who lost stuff or something like that. I, I was a little surprised that Thor does not look the way he did in 2013 in the time travel period when the, you know, the other people, they look the way they did in New York. In, when yeah, 2012 in New York. So, but I'm I'm not really complaining. I just feel like it's maybe a inconsistency or I yeah. Let me real quick. There we go. Now the let's see. And we go to Morag in 2014. I thought I I really like when they, you know, we we see Quill, you know, dancing and and singing along, and then it cuts to the outside perspective, and it's like he's just standing there like a jackass, you know, dancing around and singing. If you don't hear the music as he, you see him do it, yeah, he looks ridiculous. I th I thought that was that was pretty funny. And. 
and and Nat and Barton go to Vormir, and one of them says to the other, "This is a long way from Budapest." And yeah, Nebula sees the other Nebula, or sees what the other Nebula sees something. I have to admit, when when they saw that something was wrong, you know, they saw something unusual, and Thanos was like, "Bring her to the ship." I thought that he would have, like the the. I had guessed that Thanos would be, would would think that 2014 Nebula was a traitor, or something, and was gonna like torture her like he did in in Infinity War, and he even had her in that same position, but. Then, you know, Squidward just scans her and is like, well, you know, there's this thing and there's this other thing. He doesn't think that she did anything wrong. So that was, uh, yeah, I I was surprised and pleasantly, you know, and the, let's see. There was uh, our, yeah, the, the thing with how Thanos... I don't think I noted it, so I'm just saying it here. The thing with how Thanos said, you know, okay, so I tried killing 50%, but there were still some that remembered the way things used to be. So instead, I'm going to kill 100%, and then I'm going to create a new universe so that they can be grateful for what I gave them without any of them, you know remembering so that they'll only be happy they won't be they won't miss what it used to be and i i i thought it was, it was a very natural sort of next step for you know when he sees that people you know he said i will you know i'll watch the sun set on a grateful universe or sunrise whatever and the yeah, you know, now he found out, well, the the universe isn't, not, not the entire universe is going to be happy. And in response, you know, and, and that's even, I think, was it, was it Loki who said to him, you will never be a god? When clearly that is, you know, Thanos fancies himself one. And let's see. Yeah, and the thing with Strike taking Loki's staff and the whole, yeah, the, the elevator, you know, you think the elevator fight is going to happen, and I really love the, you know, we never thought about it, but yeah, Thor probably had to take the stairs in in Stark Tower after the the, the fight. Because they were very high up, and yeah, he's really, really big, and really, really heavy. It makes sense that they that he couldn't. And and they're like, okay, okay, and he, you know, he, he makes a dent on on one of the the doors. And he's like, oh, I hate stairs. And he's like, so many stairs. That's that's really funny. And. And and Ant Man shrinks and gives twenty twelve Tony, you know, basically like cardiac arrest, I guess, by you know temporarily disabling the the what was it Thor called it the the shiny chest thing or something. And I love how I don't even know if this is gonna work. And he just does this. Like, oh, it worked. I didn't. I didn't know if it was gonna work. And and just yeah, because you know before. 20, you know, in, in 2013 in Iron Man 3, he had the heart surgery done, and he no longer needed the thing. That's another thing, I, I, don't th I think I ran out of room to, to note. I like that they did the, the sort of water funeral thing, and they have the proof that Tony Stark has a heart thing, as, you know. And the, yeah, it's, uh, crap, where was I? Tony's... Yeah, you know, in at the end of that movie, he, he had the surgery, but this is before that, so yeah, you know, the the thing that's gonna temporarily give him a heart attack, and 
you know, Loki grabs the the blue cube from and and you know transports to somewhere, and we never actually we don't we don't see where he goes or what exactly happens there. But the yeah, I mean, it's not really a, a plot hole. They could uh, let's see, yeah. So the and and you know, 2012 cap is like I've located Loki, and it's like. Look, don't you know? Yeah. And and he you know he he hits yeah twenty twenty two cap hits hits twelve cap, and you know twelve cap is like I can do this all day and and twenty two cap is like oh, I know you can <laughs> like even he will get tired of his own catchphrase eventually. And let's see, yeah, and and you know he sees. The, the, you know, the, the compass, and it's like, where, where did you get that? And, you know, 22 Camp gets an idea, and he says, Bucky's alive. And then he smacks him, he, he does some, I forget exactly what maneuver he does, but he knocks him out. Because he knew that would, like, lower his guard, just like happened at the start of Civil War, you know. He, he knew you, Bucky, and, and Camp doesn't notice that he has the, the, Suicide vest, you know, and so so yeah saying that to him gets the and and he uses that to, to get and and then you know when with him lying there You know he he looks and he's like it is America's ass <laughs> And let's see And the ancient one you know she says it's you know it is our sacred duty to protect the, the stone, and, and she describes the, you know, this thing of, let's see, yeah, you know, in your time, maybe it doesn't look like, you know, you, you lose, but in my time, we do lose, and, you know, it becomes this alternate timeline, and Hulk points out, then why did Banner, sorry, why did Strange give the stone to Thanos, and the ancient one is like he must have had a good reason. Strange is supposed to be the best of us, so he, if he did that intentionally, then yeah. And the the so and so she gives Hulk the the time stone, and the let's see. Did I already mention the the hail hydra? I think I mentioned Cap using hail hydra. It was very very clever, and you know the the yeah we we have a very clear like this was what some people had theorized. The reason Doctor Strange gave Tony the stone was because Tony could help them with time travel. Without him, they wouldn't have been able to do the time travel. Period. We see that they needed a genius like him to do, which is also you know one of the one of the first things we see Tony do is you know genius thing of making this tiny you know making the arc processor tiny, and one of the last big genius things we see him do is you know help make time travel stable. It's it's a very like he's come a long way and he's been yeah doing so many heroic things along the way and the let's see and you know near near the end you have you know just Dr. Strange looks directly at Tony and then he holds up the one the, the one finger is like to say this is our one chance right now you have to do it Which I guess means that Doctor Strange saw this entire movie before anybody else did. So I really don't know why he's so, like, somber in Infinity War. Maybe, I, I don't know, maybe he went so far ahead in time that he had eventually, like, his, all, all of his, like, giddy excitement over the film had ultimately... Like not not necessarily past, but gotten to a level where he could control them. I mean, I guess I'll eventually get there myself. And 
let's see, they find the other nebula, and let's see, they know about the Avengers, and, you know, Gamora looks at the, excuse me, video recording, and she's like, Terrans, and, you know, Thanos says, unruly wretches, and that's exactly what was told him to in, in, at the end of Avengers 1, the first time we saw him at all. You know, the humans are not the cowering wretches you were promised. They are unruly and therefore cannot be ruled. And let's see. And yeah, let's see. Set a course for Morag. I want to see everything. I, I don't remember what those words mean anymore. And let's see. Two blocks, not three. And let's see. Yeah, right. At the yeah, this is also stuff from the very, very end. Before I get to the the other, you know, there at the end where they tell you know Miss Nat and let's see. Right, and the, yeah, the, the, I think, yeah, Bucky says to, to Cap, don't do anything stupid. Yeah, sorry, the other way around, yeah. Cap says, don't do anything stupid, and Bucky says, how can I? You're taking all the stupid with you, which, again, a great nod. That was one of the first things that they said to each other. Okay, that gets us to the other note pad right so yeah Frigga knows that Thor is from the future and let's see yeah we have more new Natalie Portman scene stuff and let's see I mean the the let's see what was I thinking the yeah, I mean, since they did the, since that wasn't Hugo Weaving as Red Skull in these two Avengers movies, it's possible that that wasn't really Natalie Portman, I guess, but for sure, like, at least some of the material was new. We saw, you know, Rocket was sneaking up behind her when she gets out of the bed, and the, let's see, when she's like they're they're picking clothes for her and she's like do you have anything with pants you know let's see and and yeah and Frigga says you know oh so this you know that makes you something are you a failure absolutely and this movie has some of the best scenes for many of the characters in the entire franchise. And, right, it, I noted, you know, Natalie Portman said, in like, I think it might have been like a red carpet thing or something. It was, you know, she, she was clearly joking, but she was like, I'm not gonna, I'm not supposed to be in more of these after Thor 2, but if they'll have me back for Avengers 22, sure. And, yeah, I mean, that's, and she is, like, they, they did, they put out a video, I forget what it's called, but it's something like the, I think the sugar hit me. I didn't even have very much candy this time, anyway. Like, a video of, like, Red, yeah, world premiere for this movie, and Natalie Portman was one of them, and I was like, but she's not in the movie. Oh, I guess maybe just to support, and... Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe that is really her. I mean, if they told her, you know, we're only going to be shooting for X amount of hours, and, you know, yeah. I, I mean, it's not like, I, I haven't heard anything where she was like, I'll never do, I'll never have anything to do with it again. 
you know, like, you know, John Favreau hasn't directed an Iron Man movie since Iron Man 2, but he didn't, you know, he said he doesn't want to direct more Iron Man movies because they, you know, the, the studio got so involved. But he's, as I've never heard him say, I've never heard of him saying no to playing Happy. He even plays Happy in this, and he has very, very little screen time or dialogue. So, I mean, you know, if, if you're like, if you think of yourself as an actor as like really like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm important, I'm, I'm a big deal, I don't want to, you know, put on a costume if they're only going to film for a few hours, I'm not going to be, you know, anyway, and let's see, yeah, Frigga is, you know, one, among the advice she gives Thor is eat a, eat a salad, and you know, he, he calls Mjolnir to him and says, ah, still, still worthy. And I really, I am so glad that we got more Mjolnir and that the, the use of both Mjolnir and Stormbreaker, that was amazing. And let's see. Yeah, and, and the, I forget exactly who, but they're, they're looking at Quill dancing, like, so he's an idiot. And, let's see, and they get the stone. Yeah, he has Rhodey and Nebula. And, you know, he's like, there's got to be booby tribes, come on. Like, a place called the, the Temple of the Power Stone, you know, of course it's going to have booby tribes. And it's like, you know, Indiana Jones reference, which is... Yes, it's cute because that scene was already obviously a homage to, you know, and, and it is is that thing of just instead of like traps, it's that the what's his face, Korath, you know, shows up with with the guys with guns, and you know Nebula grabs the the orb and burns her cyborg hand, doing it and. You know, he's, he's a little taken aback, and so she's like, I wasn't always like this. And he says, neither was I. We work with what we've got. And then I wrote, Nebula not to travel? I don't know. And when, when Thanos is looking at himself, you know, the, he sees them, them cut his head off on the, you know, on the Nebula memory recording. And I just can't help but but think if, if you know, yeah. So someone's gonna do this in like a parody or something. But like him, look at himself and you know see his his head and and be like, why didn't anybody tell me my chin is that big? And let's see. Yeah, he sees himself die and let's see nebula. And Squidward, his trailer, and Nebula, let's see, transformed by radio, Thanos nose, and Tony says, I have a vague exact idea, so I'll say something about improvising. And they go to the 1970s. And let's see something about not coming out. And they are technically in New Jersey. And we get the Stanley cameo. He drives, you know, he's a hippie driving past an army, you know, facility. And like saying, what is it? The, the, um, made the love, not war, and, yeah, I, I, I'm not entirely sure if Lee himself was a hippie, but I, I don't think, I, I, you know, I've, I've heard that he, you know, could sometimes be a lot like one, so, you know, it is a cute way for his last cameo to, his last role in general.
and Tony finds the Tesseract and you know, Howard is like, do I know you? And yeah, Tony is seeing his dad for the first time since he was 16 years old. And yeah, I got it. I really, really loved it. And you know, there are a, there are parts where it's a tiny bit like just just cheesy. You know, it, it doesn't not not only like meaningful and compelling, but a little cheesy and corny. But there really aren't that many, and it never felt. I, I was never there was never an emotional scene in the movie where I felt like okay. Can can this please end? You know, I was always invested every time. And yeah, you see Hank Pym, always snarky, and they de-aged him. It looks pretty good. It's still not quite. I don't know. I haven't seen him in any movies from 1970, so I don't know if it's accurate to what he looked like back then. But yeah, it's just a little bit, it's a little little bit off. Maybe a little too smooth. And. You know, the, they were told that, uh, let's see, you know, Howard's wife is pregnant and he says, you know, I hope it's a, a girl because more of a chance that he won't be so much like his old man because the greater good has rarely outweighed my self-interest. And yeah, just the little things of like, you know, Tony tries to encourage him, you know, says, you know, I'm, I'm sure you'll be a, a good parent. And, you know, yeah, these, these various things. And Steve is close to being face to face with Peggy Carter. I will say if, if there was any one thing that I could understand people who watch this whole movie, you know, people may be frustrated that despite Peggy being in the movie and appearing in at least these two scenes, we don't see her and Steve, you know, the, the only thing we see of them together is the dance. And we don't actually, you know, we don't see her, you know, reaction to, to, you know, him still being, you know, to her, her, to him coming back, you know. I, I could understand that. I don't think that there was really need for or room for that, but I could understand people being frustrated with that. And. And Jarvis is Howard's actual butler in person, which is also a, a great, you know, it is in, in the, let's see, in the comics, at least, you know, I, I, I stopped reading them of, of, you know, year, a few years, I don't remember exactly, years back, but as far as I read, Tony did have a regular human butler called Jarvis. They changed it to an AI for the movies because the first Iron Man movie came out the same year as the second Nolan Batman movie and they didn't want people to, you know, just think, oh, it's just, it's the same because in some ways they are very similar characters. Which is not necessarily like a rip-off kind of thing. It is just that a lot of comic book writers came, you know, thought that it would make sense if someone was going to go out and, you know, fight crime, it would make sense for it to be someone really rich that, uh, had, you know, yeah, that could maybe also invent things. And, you know, the dead parents, that's just a motivator. And then I wrote something about Nebula, Nebula, maybe the, yeah, I don't know. And, yeah, Nebula tells Gamora about the Soul Stone and, you know, yeah, Nebula says to her younger self, you disgust me, but you're not useless, and, yeah, Nebula poses as, you know, 
22, 14 nebula poses 22 nebula and you see warmer in 2014 and let's see yeah and and you know it's it's Nat and Ronan with the red skull and yeah I think he's the one who says something about if it if only it were that easy or something like that and yeah and it says to, you know to get the stone you have to lose you love a soul for a soul and Nat believes him and Ronan is less inclined to but he does come around and both of them try to sacrifice themselves and prevent the other one from and you know yeah and and he's like I, the way I am right now is not I don't want to go back to my kids like this or something, something like that and she's like I don't judge people on their worst mistakes and you know you I said you shouldn't either something like that and the and she also says you didn't with me or some something like that you know and yeah they they literally fight each other physically over who sacrifices himself and Barton jumps but Nat catches him and they they hang in the air and she, you know Nat eventually jumps and yeah and and Barton is you know horrified excuse me um 30 seconds and I'll be back um. Yeah, that was almost exactly 30 seconds, in fact. Okay, here we go. And yeah, Barton gets the Soul Stone. Let's see. I noticed that Nat can't come back. And what does that say? Thor? Nat. Angry, want, how to do to. I have no idea what that means. And. Yeah, and, and Barton. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, Thor is, is angry and wants to undo. That's why, yeah. So, to bring Nat back. And Barton says it was supposed to be me and Hulk. You know, it, it, I think it is the only time in the entire movie Professor Hulk actually, you know, does something violent in anger. Like, un, not like intentionally and they put the stones on the glove and Thor needs to be the one to use the glove so he can fix it and you know he's like do you have any idea how much electricity is searching through this thing what do you think is is what say uh, running through my veins and roads like cheese was And he's, of course, talking about lightning. And, yeah, and Professor Hulk says it has to be me. The radiation is mostly gamma. The Hulk was made for it, which is, again, such a great... Because they do say that. In, in the first Avengers movie, they say that about the Tesseract. It throws off a lot of gamma radiation. And that's, you know, part of why they hire Banner. And we never, we're never told about the other stones, 
but we have been told that in some ways they are very similar in the way that they you know yeah well, how they're made what they what they're made up of or something like that and he yeah I, th I think yeah I think also Avengers 1 is where the I think Tony is the one who says you know the explosion should have killed you. that much gamma should have killed you the Hulk saved your life and Banner says saved it for what and this was what he it, yeah what he saved it for and let's see Nebula is you know working the, the time travel mechanism and Tony said, you know, run the barn door protocol, which closes doors and shutters all over the facility. Let's see. That's a lot of power, but Hulk can handle it. Yeah, he, you know, Hulk, I'll, I'll, I, I can handle it, or something like that. And the 2014 Thanos warship comes through the portal. And... Yeah, the the you know Hulk snaps and they're not sure. You know, did it work? We're not sure. And let's see. yeah, and the cell phone buzzes. And what does that say? Um, I don't know what that means. And we see that it's Laura calling Barton. And let's see. And then something about Ant Man waking or working thin, I don't know. And then Thanos' warship blows up the facility. And I I really I have to admit the fight where you know the Thor Cap and Iron Man fight Thanos, you know, you see not, you, you see very little of it in the trailer, but you know, you know what's going to happen. I did not think that it was going to happen at the very end. I thought that it was going to happen there at the very start. And then, you know, yeah, then they realize he doesn't have the stones and then, you know, but the, the, let's see, the second... Yeah, it, it wasn't. I wasn't sitting around waiting for it to happen the whole movie. Let's see. And Rhodey has to leave his, his suit, and Rocket is buried and can't breathe. You know, as an Avengers film, this is very different from the from from the first three, and just from the the rest of the MCU in general. And here I noted that this might be the best film ever made. I, I currently I would have to say it's probably, in my opinion, again I'm not too for anybody else, but yeah, probably the best movie ever made and the the best. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. And yeah, the the alien army is chasing Hawkeye through the tunnel. And Thanos tells Nebula, find the stones and bring them to me. What do you what will you do? Wait. Yeah, because the the let's see. Because she's still undercover. He if he walks in and tries to get the stones, they're gonna fight him. But if he waits outside, they're gonna go outside when they wanna fight him. Whereas Nebula can walk right in there and and get you know, get in a position to get the stones, which is what she then does. It's in incredibly clever. And let's see. Yeah, Gam Gamora and Nebula Taunton. You know, she says, I try to kill you several times, but after that we become friends, sisters. I really appreciate that because Gamora is aware that they aren't currently like sisters and 
she does want that with Nebula. So that's a really great, you know, if she didn't, then she would just say, why would I want that? You know, why would I want to be your friend or your sister? And let's see. And, you know, Tony tells Steve, if you lose that shield, let's see. Yeah. I'm not in touch with it. Yeah, just if you lose the shield again, keep it. And I wrote the note. I really appreciate that no trailer showed Thor's new look, which I really, I mean, it showed Barton's new look. So, you know, you you thought that maybe, oh, okay, you know, this is this is all the new stuff we're gonna get. And Thor, Cap, and Iron Man. Fighting Thanos and Thor's got both hammers. And yeah, Thanos now says 50% isn't enough. And he's gonna create a new universe. And I forget exactly who it is, but someone says, you know, born of blood. And but but yeah, you know, he's talking about creating a new universe so that they won't be, you know, ungrateful about what, you know, basically he's saying no one will know you existed at all. So I'm too sleepy to do a better Xerxes. And let's see. And Ant-Man and Rescue. Let's see. I do not know what that means. And Hawkeye in the tunnel. Okay, Nebula and Gamora. And let's see. Nebula, Nebula. Charge, charge. From help, Thanos. Let's see. Right, it, yeah, the, the Nebula, you know, two Nebulas in the same place. And, you know, Nebula would have killed Gamora. So, 20, 22 Nebula kills 14 Nebula to save Gamora. And, yeah, Gamora, even she lowered her gun without 14 Nebula doing so. There's a lot of trust to show her. And, let's see. Yeah, and, you know, Cap, Thor, Iron Man versus Thanos is amazing. And I wrote something comparing it to a fight in Avengers 3, but I can't. Oh, yeah, the, sorry. Yeah, of course. The three of them didn't get much of a chance to fight Thanos. You know, the, the Iron, well, Iron Man, maybe. Yeah, Iron, Man, Iron Man attacks him several times. Yeah, but it's, sorry. Yeah, it's not a close up visceral fight, which it is in this. And Thor only attacks him once. Infinity War and Cap also just he briefly tries to stop him, but in this they're you know, straight up just go you know head to head fight, and uh, let's see, and Thanos tries to use excuse me, Stormbreaker on Thor and Cap grabs Mjolnir and uses that, and let's see yeah and Thanos cuts. Cap's shield in half, which does happen in the comics as well, and that was what Tony saw in Avengers 2. And Thanos admits he's going to enjoy destroying Earth, even though it didn't used to be personal. And all of Thanos, you know, Thanos has tons of his forces on Earth, and let's see. And at this point, my friend turned to me and said, when, you know, when's Cap Captain Marvel going to show up? And then Sam calls Steve and says, on your left. And all the, all the portals open and let in all the, you know. Yeah, and, and the very first is just the, the Black Panther, the three of, you know, Black Panther, Okoye, and Shuri. And let's see, and Sam, and yeah, all everyone who's been undusted is now back. 
And it makes sense, I mean, this is just a few minutes after undusting. So it makes sense that, you know, they didn't get there right away. The, the, I mean, let's see. If everyone was undusted to where they were, then that means the Doctor Strange, who's, you know, who knows a lot about what's going on, he was still on Titan. And, yeah, I guess, I don't know, maybe it's possible for him to use a portal to get back to Earth. Maybe it just takes longer. That's the thing, we, we don't see, in Doctor Strange and Infinity War, we don't see anybody able to make a portal from one planet to another without the, the Tesseract. Nothing less than the Tesseract can do that. Strange can, you know, Strange teleports several people around on Titan, and he teleports several people and things on, I almost said on New York, on Earth, in New York, but he never, and, and one of those portals goes far away from New York, but it doesn't go to outer space. Excuse me. Anyway, yeah, you know, everyone, and, and I really appreciate that it, you know, that was the thing, you know, here Wong and a bunch of other sorcerers are here. And it was like, why why weren't they in the climax of the third movie? And you know, ultimately, you know, it's, you, you can't do, you can't have all of them always do the, yeah. And you have Ravagers, you've got Pepper Potts in the rescue suit. You have the Wizards, you've got Ant-Man as Giant Man. Let's see, excuse me. And the, let's see, there's the, yeah, and, and various space ships, and, and I love, they did it, they actually, you know, Cap says, Avengers, assemble, and I, I literally, I jumped a little bit in my chair, I'm not gonna lie, I was like, yes, they did it, they got there, they, I'm really glad that, it hadn't been said at all before, because this was the perfect time to have him say it. And I wrote that the climax is huge. And let's see. And Giant Man, with a single punch, takes out one of the Midgard worms, the, the flying things. And, and then he steps on it. And Spider-Man rambles, you know, to, to Tony and, you know, about being safe. It's like, it must have been, and, and then you weren't there. And, like, and, and Tony goes in and he, and he hugs him. And it's so, it's such a sweet moment. <clears throat> because this is, this is probably the first time that Peter has been hugged by someone he considers a male role model since Uncle Ben's death. Which I'm still really glad we're probably not going to see. And, yeah, Tony isn't usually someone who shows affection, you know. Yeah, so so having, yeah, I, I, that, was, that was great. And, you know, Quill is seemingly reunited with Gamora. And I I was like, yeah, but it doesn't make sense. And then they actually did do it. They, they realistically, you know, she's like, don't touch me. And... Yeah, it's you know this this Gamora doesn't have the the what's it called you know history with with Quill and yeah I mean in in the first Guardians when he tr leans in to kiss her she she's like she gets her her sword out you know so yeah this is and here he does like trying to try to hug her and she, yeah and then it's like is this you're sure this is the guy, and and I think yeah, I think Rocket is the one who said, and your choices were him or a tree, and it's yeah, and yeah, kind of. I mean, it, certainly, it, uh, Drax isn't gonna be interested, nor Rocket, and and you know they say, what do we do with the, the stones? Excuse me. And, you know, there's the man, and Wasp calls Cap Cap, which she made fun of Scott for doing in their movie. And, let's see. 
And I noted that Doctor Strange, this must have been the one, you know, version of events where, you know, human being won. Sorry, where the good guys won. It wasn't only human beings. You know, that everyone opposing Thanos won. I've seen a lot of scenes where a character tries to hotwire a car. This is the single most consequential of them that I've ever seen. And let's see. I think I wrote that Spider-Man tries to get the, the gauntlet and Thanos... Let's see, Thanos and Wanda fight, and I really like that they let her be as strong as... We've seen her being perfectly strong in these movies before, but... I mean, in the comics, she's intensely strong. So, yeah, seeing her be this powerful is really great. And Spider-Man activates instant kill and fights a bunch of the, the aliens, and let's see... I think I wrote some about telekinesis and Thanos say rain rain fire or something like that and let's see and crap what does that mean okay so there's something here about the yeah the wizards create shields I get that and something about Wanda and then I wrote H I S S. I have no idea what that. Is. Anyway, yeah, and and Spider Man webs to Mjolnir so that uh, you know that can take him further. And Valkyrie's flying on her horse, and suddenly the rain of fire stops. And it's like, wait, why? You know, and, and the guns go from pointing down to pointing up. They're just, they're really happy to see her. And, you know, it's, of course, Captain Marvel. And, you know, it's, it's, something has just entered the atmosphere. And she just fly you know, if we've got, if we've got the, the ship here. She just flies. And just, that's that was awesome. And just downs it just like that. And, let's see. And, yeah, and, and the, um, let's see, yeah, and, and, you know, Captain Marvel, it comes right up to Spider-Man, and I think, yeah, I, I think he's like, I, I'm, I'm Peter Parker, or I'm Spider-Man or something, and she's like, you got something for me, and it's just, I, I really, and it's like this thing, she's confident, but she's not a jerk, you know, she's not like, get out of the way, you know, what, why, why are we working with this kid? No, she's just, you know, yeah, there's a job that needs to do, and, and yeah. And they make a last stand, and let's see. Hmm. What does that say? Time. Time. Gauntlet. Then Thor. And Captain Marvel versus Thanos, which is awesome. There was this recent, like, one question thing with Simon Colbert, and then someone asked, you know, Captain Marvel, and, you know, Brie Larson, who would win? And and he starts to say, and, and she just says, Captain Marvel. I, uh, Captain Marvel wasn't even going to be one. Captain Marvel, doesn't matter. She's always going to win. That's really awesome. And yeah, they fight for the, the glove, and then he tears out the, the Power Stone, and punches her with that, with the other hand. But Tony flies and just very briefly touches the, the gauntlet. Yeah, this is yeah, this is when, you know, Doctor Strange all up his family. This is our one chance to to start. And let's see. I'm almost through these. It's, I I'm honestly seriously considering not recording more tonight after I've done the the pad. But anyway, yeah, Tony evidently got all the, the stones. 
so you know when Thanos snaps, you know, he, I, and he even says something being grandiose, and he just snaps, and you know, just goes clink, which is what you would expect if if someone uses a metal gauntlet to snap their fingers. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he, you know, I am inevitable, and then clink, and and I am Iron Man. That's, uh, yeah, which actually means that's that's in Iron Man three as well, isn't it? I'm not entirely sure if it's Iron Man 2, but the f the last thing he says in Iron Man 1 and 3, you know, Iron, Iron Man 3, unless you count the post credits, you know, obviously, but, and here it's also one of the last things he says. Hmm. Did I already mention, I, I think that the, the kid, it's like a teenage kid, a teenage boy at Tony's funeral was standing by himself. I think that might be Harley, and it makes sense that he would be standing by himself because he grew up without a father. So he's probably not, you know, when he was bullied at school, he's maybe not the most social person, and he might not know anybody else there. The only person, you know, he knew Tony, but he didn't know anybody else that was, you know, yeah. And. I mean, I will say, considering that the actor aged like five or six years since last we saw him, I don't think it would have hurt to have just a brief little, just maybe if he was holding something that we connected with him, like maybe the potato gun Mark II or something, or like, yeah, just so, something. I mean, I, I watched Iron Man 3 just yesterday. And I knew that he was going to be in this because I saw him on the cast list just like, well, yeah, when I, when I watched The Predator, actually. So, like, half a year ago. Other than that, if I just saw him, I probably wouldn't have guessed that that was him. And, let's see. And Tony's snap dusts all of Thanos' forces and ultimately Thanos himself. He's, he sits down, defeated, and then he turns to dust. And let's see. Tony Stark, War Machine, Pepper. Yeah, and Tony dies from the power from using the power glove because it's. I'm sorry, that is so bad. And Pepper says goodbye to, to Tony. And I really thought that was. A, yeah, a, a great. You know, and then she's like, Tony. We're gonna be okay now. We're gonna be okay. You can rest now because he's been obsessed since 2012. So you know, 10 years, and just and that really is like, you know, different people. There are different like. If if you're facing someone who's dying and you know you can't save them, you know what you say to them isn't. There's not necessarily one universal thing that makes sense to say to every single person in that situation but there are very specific ones and Pepper knows him well enough to know his and yeah that is his you did it you you won you can rest now because that's a, he has such he's always been bad at relaxing at, at calming down and excuse me. and Hawkeye goes to see his family again, and Peter goes to school, and he and Ned have that handshake thing that, I'm not sure it's, it's the exact same one, but they also, were also seen to have one in the Spider-Man solo movie. I'm really glad that soon I'll be able to say, you know, I, actually I guess I always should say the first MCU Spider-Man solo movie. Maybe you should just say homecoming instead. Anyway, the the fact that, yeah, you know. Anyway, and what does that say? Right, and and Scott Lang is with his family, including Hope, who, you know, they're an item. And let's see. And Black Panther. And we close on Iron Man. 
narration and you know, some of it appears to be the recording from the ship and some of it's from later and it's being listened to by Pepper, Happy, Morgan and Rhodey and yeah, we'll hear it before the first time jump attempts and yeah, the, the funeral, excuse me, with the proof Tony Stark has a heart And what does that say? Right, I think Barton says, I wish we could let Nat know that we won. And then someone responds, she knows. And uh, yeah, Happy, you know, she, Morgan's like, I, I want a cheeseburger. And, and Happy's like, your dad loved cheeseburgers. I'm going to get you all the cheeseburgers you want. And Thor lets Valkyrie be the ruler, which I guess might mean that we're going to get, I mean, that is obviously what people have been speculating, that we're going to maybe get Thor movies where it's Valkyrie in, instead of Thor. And then, you know, in some of the comics, when they do that, they maintain the, the same name. You know, there's more than one Spider-Man. You know, when you pick up a book with the name Spider-Man on the cover, you know, if you go far enough back in time with your time machine, there's only going to be the one. You know, it's just Peter Parker. But then later, other... Spider-Man came into the franchise, excuse me. And yeah, I mean, are they gonna make a Thor, you know, title, and then it's gonna be Valkyrie instead of Thor? I I don't know. Or are they just gonna call it Valkyrie? Either way, I'm I very much I'm 100% in. And yeah, and there at the end, you know, Thor is it is like. You know, I've, I have a ride, and Rocket is like, move it or lose it. And, you know, he gets on the ship, and, you know, Quill is like, it's, you know, as long as we know who's in charge. Yeah, of course I know who's in charge, and he moves the map. See, you say that, but then you move the map as if you don't know who's in charge. And then the, the other Guardians are like, come on, you know, duke it out. You know, just grab, grab a... Are you going to use guns, or are you going to use knives? Just, you know, fight for the position of power, and... Yeah, that was, that was really funny. You know, they're they're both alphas. And, you know, Groot, get, he only gets one in this movie, but he does get an I am Groot. You know, at the, he's, he's clearly excited about the idea of them fighting for, for dominance. And, yeah, I can totally... I, I think if Guardians 3 will really be with... Excuse me. You know, the, the Guardians team trying to find Gamora, you know, 2014 Gamora, and with with Thor as a member of the team, and, you know, he's still got Stormbreaker, he's still got the, the powers of electricity, you know. I mean, Star-Lord used to be incredibly powerful, too, so it's not as though there aren't any, you know, there have never been any incredibly powerful people on the Guardians team, even though, in, in the first one, it seemed like they were basically not... Powerful, but anyway, yeah, I think they can get a lot of fun out of Thor and and Quill, you know. Yeah, let's see. I gotta say, I'm real tempted to to say that, but that's it for now because there are 42 pages of Word document. Let's see. If maybe I record. No, no, I'm 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 going for it. I'm gonna I'm gonna do at least some of it now. Okay, so.
Notes taken before watching. I can do this. So, so you know, this movie, you know, a lot of this movie happens, you know, a little while after, not immediately after Thanos went, who's got an infinity gauntlet and screws like a god? This guy! And, you know, Thanos' ship is from Titan, which I guess makes it Titanic. And I'm glad to see more Captain Marvel after the Bree Cree conflict. And I think those are it for my corny jokes. Now, I held off judgment on how I feel about the snap taking away so many beloved MCU characters until watching all this movie, so that I can see if I feel that it is emotionally satisfying the way they were brought back, to judge whether it was a good decision to get rid of them via snap, since we always knew they were going to come back, at least the most popular ones like Spider-Man and Black Panther. I do think that, you know, I... Yes, when when they all, you know, this entire movie, all the all the effort put into un, you know, to to undusting them, to snapping again and undusting them, and then preventing Thanos from dusting them again, was incredibly powerful. And and when you actually saw, you know, on your left and in the you know, on your left a reference to the the to Captain America two as well, and the wow. Okay, my my head is at least a couple sizes too big right now. Wow, that is man. Kids don't do sugar. Okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. I can I've I can still see three straight. Like like Harley after three bowls of candy. Right. So, yeah, the the you know, and they all come in and we have all these characters that we you know, we knew they were coming back, but still, we didn't know exactly how and such, you know. Now, I, I'm, I think it was a, a good idea, ultimately. Now, I am one of the people, ultimately, I am one of the people who felt that the movie, you know, Infinity War, had put us to, through as many emotions as it could by the time the snap happened. I care deeply both times I saw Vision die, and right when we see the snap, but seeing so many of my favorite characters turn to dust, I was emotionally spent by then. And I was wondering if this movie was going to have something similar where it pushes too far. And no, I, I think with this one they struck the exact right balance. In this one I was never bored and every emotional moment was emotional. And yeah, the action, I, I feel like they did it exactly right with this one. But I mean, maybe that is also part of, I mean, the first one is so much all these action scenes, and then there at the end, something happens which we do ultimately know is going to be undone. The, I think it was worth it. It's maybe not the, the best, you know, the, the single best decision made when they were making, you know, making the MCU, you know, comparatively, you know, a lot of the casting of the main characters, of titular characters, those are absolutely perfect, you know. It's it's gonna be really lonely without Chris Evans as Captain America. But but yeah, the you know ending one movie on something like that when we know that it's not, but yeah. But it's it is the story they wanted to tell and I think they did a good I'm really glad we got to see jumping around in time and you know, revisiting these Things that we already saw, and you know, especially they had a lot of fun with 2012 New York, and you know, the 2014 stuff. The the this whole you know, in comes this hijacking kind of thing, like you know, they didn't they didn't think about that maybe Nebula shouldn't go to that. And I, to be to be fair, to be fair, if she hadn't gone, they wouldn't have gotten the Power Stone. Now. In Guardians of the Galaxy Volumes 1 and 2 and Infinity War, Nebula needs to kill Thanos. And I was wondering if she was going to get another chance in this. I mean, she doesn't... Is there any time in this where she really fights the... She's, she's there at the very start and she helps find Thanos. 
and says he's not allowed. No, it's it's really in this they more focus on doing like other dramatic stuff with her. Again, I I love both. You know, yeah. And actually, I will say it was a little surprising. Technically, no one killed Thanos. It's just that Tony just barely got to you know the the gems before he snapped, and then he snaps and Thanos turns to dust. And I will say it was satisfying. I like again the character. You know, he doesn't throw a temper tantrum. He's not like I lost. I'm not supposed to lose. No, he just he he lost. So he sits down. And when he dusts, he doesn't. Even, we we've seen a lot of characters in Infinity War when they turn to dust, they like look and they're like, "What's happening?" You know, oh, welcome to Sand Hands. But then in this, Thanos is like he just he accepts it. I fought, I did my best, and I lost. And that's you know, I I really appreciate the characterization of of him in in both of these. Yeah, and, and every single time he appears in in one of these. Now, I was wondering if Captain Marvel and Black Widow would have a wry smile off. I have to admit, I didn't realize just how many times Black Widow does a wry smile until this most recent rewatching of all the MCU movies. And you know, in you know, Captain Marvel does it a bunch in her solo movie. And then she also does it in the trailer when you know Thor calls Stormbreaker. Now, I wrote the, since, since this will, since this is probably the last movie that Chris Evans plays Steve, or at least where he plays it more than a cameo, presumably this will close the rift between Tony and Steve. And I mean, ultimately, they didn't end up really agreeing with the other side on the accords, but you know, Tony, you know, left, and then when they they caught back up, he was like in you know, resentment poisons you, you know, and they do trust each other, but they don't, but I, I felt like it was enough. I mean, ultimately, the, I, I don't think it needed to have them to, well, the, the big thing I'm getting at is, it is far more satisfying than, yeah, I'm not going to spoil exactly, just in the DCEU, there, you know, one of the movies introduces a conflict between Batman and Superman, and I'm not going to say what movie resolves that conflict. You know, that, what's it called? That, you know, argument. But when it happened, I was incredibly unsatisfied as a viewer. I felt like they should have just, if they were going to resolve it that poorly, they shouldn't have had it at all. And I don't think that's the case here. I think they got some incredible material out of the, the rift. And the fact that they, they built towards the rift from the very start, and then here at the very end, we do get, no, they, they do trust each other. They do fight alongside each other. If they didn't trust each other, you know, imagine the, the thing with the 1970s. If they didn't both, if they weren't both like 100% okay, I you know I know you're not gonna trick me and I know you're gonna you're gonna do your job and you're gonna show up at the rendezvous point you know if not for that yeah the the movie they would not be able to get they would they wouldn't be able to beat Thanos so yeah now let's see okay yeah the the one second. Okay, that was more than one, but I don't think it'll be too much more. Right, so, yeah, there's a trailer, let's see, 7th of December last year, it seems like. And yeah, Tony really is trapped in space. It's not like he can take the donut-shaped one back. That one broke when they crash-landed it. I really appreciate that the trailer does not show what happens to him next from set photos and the like. I'm fairly certain that he does end up back with the others, but I'm not sure I've heard anything that's that says for sure that he can't die in this movie. And yeah, indeed. And the Marvel Studios logo gets dusted, and epic music playing. Thanos' armor is hung to show. Uh, 
Yeah, so he's no longer a warrior. It also does sort of look like a scarecrow. He's walking through one of his fields, still wearing the gauntlet. Black Widow breaks down the situation. Steve has a single tear. The old sexy cry. I think this might be the very first time... It, yeah, this is the very... F and, and never mind. I'm not going to put my... I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's one of the very first times, at least. Did he maybe cry in Civil War over Peggy's death? I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, we've seen him go through some serious stuff, and he rarely cries. And Bruce looks at a screen that has Ant-Man, another that has Shuri. That's right, yeah, they thought that Ant-Man was gone, because, the, yeah, the, the quantum... I really think that's a great way to handle it, because that is how you get an idea like that, when something weird happens. That it just, I mean, what was the... Wasn't that how... The idea of gravity, like the... Oh, wait, uh, sorry, that's like a... Anyway. Yeah, you know, sometimes you get an idea by something happening that you didn't expect to happen. And it is like, you know, who, who's going to be like, you know what, time travel. But the him coming back and realizing, what I, I thought I was gone for five hours, but it's clearly been five years. You know, yeah. And yeah, Thor is sitting in the Avengers facility, looking more disheartened in civilian clothes, like it was briefly when visiting Earth. Thor Ragnarok, otherwise hasn't been since leaving Earth in the first Thor. Nebula is on a spaceship, puts her hand on someone's shoulder, and wonders if that's Tony. Which one did they do? What did they say? That they think she ditched him. Black Widow in a city, maybe in China, and a man in front of her has just used a sword on a businessman. Turns around, it's Hawkeye and him using the sword. So this might be a persona of his, maybe Ronan, and Nerdist video suggested he lose some or all of his family due to the snap. Steve notes that what they're doing now has to work because he doesn't know what he's going to do if it doesn't. And that's actually, that's them attacking Thanos at the start of the movie. So most of the movie happens five years after that point. So he's been at the point where he's like, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't fix this for five years. Wow. Yeah, this movie really pushes them through the, the grinder. Excuse me. Okay, let's see. We don't know exactly what they are going to do, what their plan is. Part of me hopes that we'll go into the movie not actually knowing if it's time travel, perhaps a la butterfly effect. There are at least two types of time travel stories when it comes to us seeing the time travel. Rather than being told that it happened, the kind of where it goes between different periods without us seeing making changes along the way. And yeah, that did ultimately, that is what this one does. And I make a comparison, which I don't think I'm gonna go into here. And then, uh, yeah, and then the kind where you do see changes when it returns to the present or future of the like. And it doesn't necessarily go to many time periods. And of course, combinations of the two. And again, I'm not gonna give that away. Alternate dimensions, or what exactly, with a relatively small team of Avengers? I think they can do that without it getting overwhelming. With Avengers 3, extensive time travel dimensions would have been ridiculous. And yeah, I hope no trailer would tell us, and I'm glad they, none of them did. There were big and unanswered questions about Infinity War that no trailer told us the answers to. We only learned them by watching the movie. And the title card is reconstructing rather than dusting. After the title reveal, Ant Man shows up at the front door, Ant's gonna be let in. He arrives in the quantum tunnel van, so they have that to use. He runs through introducing himself, trying to remind them about the Civil War airport fight. It seems to think Steve may not remember him. Reminds him of going huge, and his name Ant Man. So the trailer ends on a kind of funny note. When it otherwise there's you know otherwise it isn't funny. Okay, and my back. Maybe I should take a break for, for now, pretty soon. 
But yeah, and I know they're hugely different from the trailers. For third, you know, for Infinity War, we don't see any action scenes. And there's a uh, Super Bowl. Super Bowl? Oh, right. a, a TV spot. And I didn't know it was a great spot. And Steve has his shield back. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to stop at this point. Let's see. I mean, I guess I could go ahead and just do this. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know exactly when I'm gonna finish this. But it's, there's some chance I'm not going to uh, finalize any of these and like, check for before before I've done all of them. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. When, I, when next I record is going to be based on when how my back is. But yeah, the, the most important thing was the, the notes I took while watching because those I cannot... I'm I'm not good at recreating what those are supposed to mean more than a few hours after watching so and the rest of this stuff is you know notes I've taken over you know months so yeah now the the let's see yeah so yeah I I love this movie and I can't wait to talk more about it but it's not going to be right away maybe maybe tomorrow but yeah for now bye